The stars are aligned here in Frisco, Texas, as we recognize this season's most outstanding football players across the FCS. And over the next hour, you'll learn about the great legacies of our award namesakes as we present this season's award winners of the five most prestigious FCS football awards. It's all coming up on the Stats Perform FCS National Awards Show. Hello, everyone. Let me welcome you to tonight's show. It's the Stats Perform FCS National Awards Show, and I'm your host, Gary Reasons. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Frisco, Texas. This is the 35th season of these awards, and we're very pleased that we're able to have you here uh, following our spring event, which actually was a virtual broadcast, which kind of started the genesis of bringing this to, to, to air as well. And, you know, for myself, I've been involved with these uh, FCS awards for, for more than 20 years, and really, really pleased to do so. I'm a former FCS player, and it uh, really brings a lot, of, a lot of joy to me to be able to kind of give back and talk about this level of, level of football. You know, this is a broadcast event. This is going to be live across uh, Valley Sports Networks starting tomorrow, so you should, should check your local listings for that. And it's been there, for, it's going to be an opportunity for us to, to showcase the great excellence of FCS football everywhere across the country. You know, for this year, you know, we kind of kept this, the, this national broadcast aspect, and I'm, I'm really proud of that because I think that we need to kind of showcase more the FCS level of brand of football, and I think it's going to do, uh, do very well. And now we'd like to share a brief history of these awards. The FCS National Awards first began in 1987 and is now comprised of five legacy awards that recognize excellence in football at the Division I FCS level. And they are called legacy because of the great tradition, accomplishments, and supreme excellence of our namesakes for the awards. When you hear the names Peyton, Buchanan, Rice and Robinson in FCS circles, you are talking about the true legends of the game and represent not only some of the greatest football names ever in the FCS ranks, but these legends are certainly recognized among the true greats of football from any level. And you'll notice that uh, tonight's event is going to be a little bit less formal than we typically would have a dais and a big panel up here. We're going to have some comfortable chairs for our guests and our, and our winners to come up here and join with us. It also gives me an opportunity to introduce my co-host for tonight, Miss Sarah Mer Merrifield. She's a, a sports anchor for v Valley Sports Southwest, and she joins us tonight. Good evening, Sarah, and welcome. Thanks, Gary. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> And as far as uh, getting a chance to get to be here with all of you and celebrate the incredible accomplishments you guys have had all the season, uh, I'm welcoming in VP of Global Operations, Brian Orfici of Stats Perform. And you know, this is a special event, of course, and uh, Stats Perform and, and the FCS National Awards have had a very special relationship over the last uh, handful of years. And uh, what about that relationship makes it so special and unique to be a part of and, and get a chance to celebrate with all these uh, incredible people? Yeah, th thanks, Sarah. Great, great to have you here. Um, so this is the seventh uh, banquet that, that we've had. Uh, and Every one of them has been, uh, you know, significantly different. You know, when, when we when we first started, uh, there was a question as to whether or not these awards would actually still continue to go on. Uh, a little bit of history: uh, Stats took over uh, the sports network uh, at that point, uh, and, and and those guys had a long history uh, with the FCS, um, and really, with Stats Perform, what we tried to do is, is two buckets, right? One, we wanted to shine an even brighter light uh, on the FCS, given the scale that we had as a company. And, and frankly, we had a custodianship, we felt, to keep those legacy awards alive. You've got the four names up there, and as Gary said in the opening, this is the best of the best, right? Uh, and, and that was a responsibility that we took seriously. Every year we've tried to get a little bit better, and, and I think it's, it's peak with this year's show. And, and a special opportunity to be back in, in person again. And, and uh, I know we're all excited to be back in person out here on the stage. And, uh, you know, we've seen some really unprecedented times in the last couple of years. So with this unique class of recipients, what makes it extra special for them to be getting these awards tonight? Well, I mean, there, there's so much to celebrate any year. I think perhaps the biggest thing this year is, is resiliency, right? Uh, th this has truly been unprecedented times across all facets of society, uh, certainly college athletics, college football. This is the second banquet that we're doing over the course of the last you know, six to eight months because the previous season was pushed back. So really, really strange times. Um, and in addition to the, just the typical fantastic performances that we always see, this one I think more than anything is differentiated uh, by just that, by, by the resiliency of the student athletes. 
Well, Brian, thank you so much for taking the time with us. And of course, thank you for uh, helping us put on such a great event tonight. And uh, we're excited to see the rest of the evening unfold. But Gary, we'll send it back over to you. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you, Brian, thank you for joining us. Hey, I'm actually now joined by Mr. FCS Football himself. I always tease him about that. This is Craig Haley, and, and you guys, if you, if you look at anything, at, at stats perform of what we're able to do on the analysts and so forth, Craig is all over everything. He actually does, a, he does so much work, it's, it's really a, a unimaginable how he gets everything done. He takes care of the FCS uh, poll for stats, uh, the stats tw top 25 poll, and he also actually care the caretaker of the votes for this, this award, uh, ceremony and talk about all the different awards. Craig, so tell me a little bit about the history of these awards and really how this all started. Well, thank you, Gary. I mean, I, as you mentioned, this is the 35th year. It, it, uh, our awards, Stats Reform, I mean, it started with the Eddie Robinson and Walter Payton Awards. Um, you know, Walter Payton, the Offensive Player of the Year and the Coach of the Year, Eddie Robinson, certainly. Legendary names and, and you know, they used to come and present the, their awards, and right. it just has grown through the years. We've had great presenters. I mean, the namesakes obviously leave, leave us breathless. Buck Buchanan and Jerry Rice, uh, we've added through the years. So it's just a labor of love to be able to uh, organize this and, and uh, present these awards to outstanding people. Yeah, and just kind of quickly here, talk about the votes. I mean, this year specifically, the votes were very tight. Indeed, and uh, you know, we're very pleased to have a national cross-section of, of voters. Um, it's, uh, we have 50 voting, voter panel for bo both the top 25 and it's the same panel for the FCS awards. It's balanced. Every conference, 15 conferences represented. Um, two or three per conference, another say 15 voters that are national voters. So yes, it's, it's very tight. You know, you're looking at, there's almost no wrong uh, with the candidates. 25 each for the Buchanan and, and, and uh, Peyton awards. So, you know, at the end of the, the regular season, uh, that Thanksgiving week, we, we select our winner after, you know, voting each week with the top 25 poll. So we're very pleased with, with the balance of our voting panel. Sure, sure turned out well. Good stuff, Craig. Thank you. And thank you, Brian Orofici, for joining us tonight. Hey, when we come back, we're going to hand out our first award of the evening. We're going to be talking about a Scholar Athlete Award. Stay with us. As we begin our awards presentation, we start to looking by looking at the complete student athlete. What I mean by that is one that not only does things on the field, but certainly in the classroom and in the community. But you know, the FCS Doris Robinson Award has really been one of those athletes that, uh, of awards that we've come to, to love in this in this environment because we are able to to talk about different types of athletes. It's named after the late school teacher. Uh, Eddie Robinson's wife, and she, you know, she was a longtime educator for over 60 years, so it was a long time coming in what she was able to do, and she did a lot for the community. And I'm very pleased now to be joined by the great great grandson of Eddie and Doris Robinson, Quentin Burrell. He's a, a, he's a football coach for Grambling State University, and he joins us here tonight to talk about his great great grandmother, Miss Doris Robinson. Welcome, Quentin, and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Hey, let me ask you. Let me ask you first of all. You know, you've grown up in this family, and tell me about something that uh, might be unique about Miss Robinson that we don't know yet. Um, I think the most unique thing was she wasn't the biggest football fan. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, she was more of you're going to get your books before you do anything. So I think you know, with with a young man like Zay, he personifies exactly what my great grandmother you know stood for, which was being a student athlete, you know, and being a student first before you were an athlete. Yeah, so she spent so much time, I'm sure as an educator, but also with football teams. So she became a, a parent or a mother, so to speak, for literally hundreds and hundreds of football players. Talk about her relationship with, with Coach Robinson and also with the football team. Well, you know, as she, I mean, my, grand, my grandfather coached for 57 years, so she kind of had to, you know, adapt to liking football. So. You know, she became basically like a second mother to a lot of the young men that came through the program. And, um, you know, it wasn't just about 
football. It wasn't just about books. She was a, a mother, a psychologist. She cooked. She cleaned. She did everything. So, you know, it, it was something. It was a special deal growing up and kind of seeing that, you know, go through the ranks, you know. Very good. Well, she's a great representative of this award, and we're really pleased to have her be a part of it. So this is the seventh presentation of this Doris Robinson Award, Scholar Athlete Award, and this season's winner was selected from 15 different finalists, one from each of the, of the conferences in the FCS. And I'd like to announce the winner for us here today. And the 21, 2021 Stats Perform Doris Robinson Award winner is Zavion Furkron, senior offensive lineman from Illinois State University. And here's more on our award winner. This season's recipient of the Stats Perform FCS Doris Robinson Scholar Athlete Award is Zavion Furkron from Southern Illinois University. And under head coach Nick Hill and offensive coordinator Blake Rowland, Furkron was the team's only captain the last two seasons and was key in the Saluki's return to prominence with back-to-back -back seasons in the FCS playoffs. A starting guard in 54 of his 57 career games, Furkron was a three-time Missouri Valley All-Conference selection. Congratulations to Zavion Furkron as this season's Doris Robinson Award winner. Please join me in congratulating our Doris Robinson Scholar Athlete Award winner, Zavion Furkron. Xavion, obviously listening to some of the, just a very small snapshot of some of the things you were able to accomplish in your time at Southern Illinois University. Uh, you know, not just excel on the field, but in the classroom too, you're leaving with not one degree, but two. Uh, your devotion to being a leader in the community, not to mention, uh, of course, being a team captain for your team, uh, not once, but twice. For you to be able to cap off your season and your career at Southern Illinois University, what does it mean to walk out with this award and, and call yourself a Doris Robinson Award winner? Um, honestly, it, it's, it's hard to explain. Uh, it means the world to me, not only me, but my family as well, Saluki Nation back at home. Um, to be the only person in school history to win that award is a, it's a blessing in itself, and I'm, I'm very grateful. And as you close your chapter on this part of your life, what goals have you set for yourself next? Because obviously this is a great accomplishment to, to move forward with. Yes, of course. Uh, I mean, as a, as a small child, I've always dreamed of playing, playing at the next level in the NFL, and um, that's kind of where I'm at right now, pursuing that dream of mine and, and praying that that comes true. And is there anyone in particular you'd like to thank for the, you know, the help and the support to get to this point in your career? Uh, first, I want to thank God, honestly. Without, without him, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Um, my, support, my support system, it takes a village, and you know, they've been there every step of the way. Uh, my mom, my sister, I know they're looking over me. Um, it, it just very grateful to be here. I'm sure they'd be incredibly proud of your accomplishments and your achievements. Avion, congratulations on being the Doris Robinson Award winner. Thank you, I appreciate it. Gary, back to you. Avion. <laughs> Definitely a deserved honor and, and you're truly an inspiration. Congratulations. Well, coming up next, we are going to recognize leadership as we talk, start talking about our FCS Coach of the Year. Stay with us. The impact of coaching on a football team, it's all about leadership. And, and when you think about the leading teams of young men for for years or even decades, they begin to see true leadership. And for our namesake, the legendary Grambling State coach, Eddie Robinson, coaching for 56 years at Grambling and amassing over 408 victories. Coach Rob along the way, well, he touched lives of thousands of student athletes and left a legacy of leadership that is literally unmatched. And with the leadership in mind, we are now awarding the 53rd, excuse me, the 35th season of the Stats Perform FCS Eddie Robinson Award. And now to share some thoughts on winning the Eddie Robinson Award is the 1997 Eddie Robinson Award winner, former Villanova coach, Andy Talley. Uh, winning the Eddie Robinson Award certainly is daunting for sure, uh, named after one of the greatest coaches that ever coached. And of course, there are so many phenomenal coaches out there. To be chosen as the award winner is quite amazing. Uh, thankfully, we had a great staff, a great team, and a lot of support from the people of Villanova. So 
Uh, it takes a whole team to win something like the Eddie Robinson. Awesome award. Thank you, Coach Talley. We appreciate those comments. And well, when you talk about Coach Robinson, it's really good to have someone who has seen the impact that Coach Robinson has had on countless of players, coaches, and the communities. And so with that said, I asked the Commissioner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference to Dr. Richard McClellan to share some thoughts on that legendary coach and the Eddie Robinson Award. Thanks, Gary. You know, Coach Robinson is an icon, not just in black college football, but football overall. The amount of individuals that he has put into the NFL, the amount of head coaches that he's been able to develop, the amount of games won personifies excellence. Even when you go to Gremlin State University now, his name is imprinted all across that institution where now you can actually visit the Eddie Robinson Museum to show all of the great history and tradition. He has meant so much to the game. He is the game of football. And I can tell you what, the name Eddie Robinson represents excellence. It represents being the best that you can be not only in the sport of football, but in the sport of life. The positive influence that he's made with all of his student athletes and student athletes that look up to head coach Eddie Robinson. So I say this, congratulations to this season's Eddie Robinson Award winner. And like Coach Rob, take pride in knowing that you've made a positive impact in the lives of the student athletes. Congratulations. Thank you, Commissioner McClellan. And we're gonna get right to it here. The FCL, FCS Eddie Robinson Award. The 2021 Stats Perform FCS Eddie Robinson Award is Deion Sanders, head coach of Jackson State. And here's more on his season. This season's recipient of the Stats Perform FCS Eddie Robinson Award is Deion Sanders of Jackson State University. And in his first year of collegiate coaching, he led Jackson State to a program record 11 wins and capturing a Southwestern Athletic Conference title for the first time since 2007. The Tigers, with a perfect 9-0 regular season conference mark, also qualified for his first ever appearance in the Celebration Bowl and also set an FCS home attendance record with over 42,000 for home game. Congratulations to Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, as this season's FCS Eddie Robinson Award winner. And now with Sarah Merrifield, please join me in congratulating our Eddie Robinson Award winner, head coach Deion Sanders. Well, Coach, Coach Prime, uh, you know, it's, it's a, obviously it's an exciting opportunity for you to be here and celebrate this accomplishment with all of us. But, you know, when you look back at that snapshot of the last year and a half, you went from a four and three program to 11 and two with that first title since 20, 2007. Uh, you know, what made the biggest difference for you in that year and, and the success you were able to have with the, the kids and the coaching staff that you were able to do that with? First, let me digress and, and honor Eddie Robinson. When I heard that you were nominating me and calling me for Eddie Robinson, like Prime and Eddie Robinson, that's, that's unbelievable. So I'm, I'm thankful, I'm elated because you're talking about longevity character, professionalism. I never had an opportunity to meet Coach Robinson, but I watched him. I watched him, I gleaned some things from him. On a, phenomenal, so I'm truly honored. And I count it as a privilege to be sitting before you today. And, and as far as you know, what you're able to do with you know, an accolade like this, and, and while that is a great prestigious honor, you know, you've been able to Im, you know, not just improve records, but change lives as a, as a head coach, and, and the opportunity you get to do that with some kids. So what's the, what's the best part for you as a coach? <laughs> I, I love kids. I've been, uh, this is what I've been doing for quite some time. We just didn't package it and say that I was this type of coach, but we've been coaching youth football to high school and all the way up. I mean, I can recall my daughter, you know, with the five and six year old flag teams and I'm out there working my butt off, just trying to make sure we get plays that we're dominant. And I, I never just wanted to win. I wanted to really be dominant. And uh, Ashley, our AD, who, who gave me a tremendous opportunity at the prestigious Jackson State University and I, and I took it and we ran with it. And uh, our relationship is one and we have so many people that's just all a, a part of this wonderful situation that I'm in. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't be up here um, without those persons because I had a tremendous uh, 
it's not, not tragedy, but I went through a lot. I went through hell this season personally. And to have uh, my rod and staff comfort me, just like the Bible spoke, it was tremendous. And I'm thankful. And not just, you know, you're not just doing it alone. This has been a family affair for, yes. for you. And not just to be here celebrating your accomplishments, but your son as well. What's this experience been like? And, and to share with him this season. Oh, my God. My sons, my other son, Shiloh's out there to play safety for us as well. Uh, he was all swag as well. And uh, the, I got to say that because he's going, you know, they're going to go at it on the way home if I didn't mention the other one. So you know how that is. But just to be able to coach and see my kids mature and to see them grow into their the manhood and who, the persons that they are is a tremendous uh, advantage to me as a father. But if you understand who my kids are, I'm not accomplishing nothing in coaching because I love them all equally. I really do. Well, Dion, congratulations on this incredible honor. And of course, best of luck in the rest of your coaching career. Well, I thank you and everyone out there. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Gary, we'll send it back to you. Thank you, Dion. We appreciate that. Coach Prime, everybody. Well, coming up next, Will, you're going to talk about the youth of the game as we recognize the top freshman of the year. Stay with us. Well, it's always exciting to see young players emerge and bring that tremendous energy that they have to the field. And really, when you talk about uh, namesakes, there's really none better and possibly the greatest football player of all time than our namesake here for the freshman of the year, Jerry Rice. You know, an NFL Hall of, and college football Hall of Famer, had a tremendous career, obviously, and in the National Football League, basically had over a 20-year career in that span and basically rewrote the record books and everything that he accomplished. You know, and this, this award we have now is the 11th edition of the Jerry Robinson Award, excuse me, the Jerry Rice Award. Robinson Rice, we get a lot of these things in here. And Jerry Rice, we, we, we really appreciate him and, and what he's uh, been able to, to bring to this. We've had some great talent win this over the years. And now to share some thoughts on being a Jerry Rice Award winner is 2014 Jerry Rice Award winner and Arizona Cardinals running back, Chase Edmonds. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Chase Edmonds here, former running back of the Fordham Rams, class of 2018. Uh, really just want to go over again something that I accomplished, which was the, uh, winning the Jerry Rice Award, and just what it meant to me, man. It meant everything. Uh, really was the first time that I kind of established myself at the FCS level. And just to just to be recognized as one of those guys that won that prestigious award, to be in the same category as guys like Terrence West, Cooper Cup, and obviously Jerry Rice, man, biggest blessing that I, I can remember just in, in my college days. And um, obviously, it's something I take very prideful. So uh, to whom it may concern, the next winner, uh, obviously, good luck to you and best wishes. Thank you. Thank you, Chase, for those words. And congratulations on the tremendous accomplishments you have going on right now with the Arizona Cardinals. It's fun to watch. And well, when you look at the career accomplishments of our namesake, Jerry Rice, you can, you can very easily say the statement that Jerry Rice was the greatest football player of all time. End of statement. That's, uh, that's not saying anything lightly. So the NFL Hall of Famer we've talked about, college football Hall of Famer, a guy who's, you know, 20 year NFL career just goes on and on and on. And, you know, Jerry, he recognizes that, he, you know, he has a legacy of football that began at, FC, at the FCS levels at Mississippi Valley State, where he was a two time All American. And he is also very proud to have an FCS award, you know, named in his honor. And Chase, Chase uh, Edmonds, you heard, as well as Cooper Cup and most recently Trey Lance are some of his award winners. Well, we, uh, Unfortunately, Jerry wasn't able to join us for this evening's event, so I asked him to prepare some remarks. And on this being his 11th season and really what the award means to him and, and also what it would mean to the finalists and the winners. Here's Jerry. Thank you. Hi, Gary. What a special night. I'm so proud that my legacy continues with the FCS Jerry Rice Outstanding Freshman of the Year Award. It's not just about what the winner does on the field, is what they do off the field too. I can't believe it's been 11 years. All of the finalists and winners have been deserving and this year is no different, just more personal as he also goes to an HBCU like I did. And I play with his father and we are best friends. Congratulations to all of tonight's award winners. And lastly, I want to personally congratulate 
this season's Jerry Rice Award winner. I wish you great success. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. This is the 11th presentation of this FCS Jerry Rice Award, and this season's winner was selected from 23 finalists. And the 2021 Stats Perform FCS Jerry, Jerry Rice Award winner is Shadur Sanders, quarterback from Jackson State. And here's more on his terrific season. This season's recipient of the Stats Perform FCS Jerry Rice Award is Shadur Sanders of Jackson State University. Under his dad, head coach Deion Sanders, and offensive coordinator Michael Pollock, Sanders enjoyed a standout freshman quarterback campaign for the Tigers. During the regular season, Sanders completed 68% of his passes and passed for over 2,900 yards while throwing 28 touchdowns and only five interceptions. He went over 3,000 yards passing and added a 29th TD pass in the SWAC championship game. Congratulations to Shadur Sanders as this season's FCS Jerry Rice Award winner. And now with Sarah Merrifield, please join me in congratulating our Jerry Rice Award winner, Shadur Sanders. Well, Shador, obviously you watched Jerry have those remarks. You're receiving this award tonight. Uh, what does it mean to you to be able to put your name with this award in 2021? Without God, none of this is possible. Uh, this award is bigger than me. It's for the city, it's for my team, um, it's for the coaches. We work hard this summer and we're just building a community here in Jackson. So I'm just really blessed to have it. Now you're a coach's kid, officially as of, <laughs> as of 2020. Uh, you know, you're, you're football through and through, but did you anticipate a season like you had this year? And what kind of goals did you set yourself going in? Uh, we, we knew this was going to happen. We was really, really excited that um, fans and everybody's able to see what we've been doing this offseason, seeing uh, just preparation going against our defense and just the team that we got and the recruits that we got coming in. So next year, I feel like it'll be kind of like this year, but better. And as far as getting an opportunity to play, not only for your dad, but experience this family connection, you know, on a, on a higher level in college, what has that experience been like for you? And, and maybe your favorite memories about doing it this season? Uh, playing at an HBCU is a, it's amazing. It's something that um, I really underestimated too, when I picked Jackson State. I didn't know the impact that we have now is as great as it is. Like everywhere we go, uh, we're all connected. So I'm really just proud that I'm able to win this award and just do it for the city. Well, Shador, congratulations on being named the 2021 Jerry Rice Award recipient. Sure, thank congratulations. You. Gary, we'll sure. send it back to you. Well, thank you, Shador, and for being with us and sharing a tremendous honor. And you had a tremendous season. This is a very special honor for you and very deserved. Well, coming up next, we're going to start talking about the defensive side of the ball, and, and we're going to be joined by our top three finalists for our Defensive Player of the Year Award. Stay with us. Our next award recognizes the excellence on the defensive side of the football, and the FCS Buck Buchanan Award is awarded annually to the most outstanding defensive player across the FCS Division I Football Championship subdivision. This is the 27th season of the Buck Buchanan Award, and, is re and it's named in honor of Julius, Junius Buck Buchanan, who is an NFL standout and also an All-American at Grambling State University. Buchanan was a 1963 American Football League draft pick by the Kansas City Chiefs, being drafted number one overall. And in 1996, Buck Buchanan was posthumously enshrined in the College Football Hall of Fame. His legendary coach, Eddie Robinson at Grambling, said that Buck Buchanan was the finest tackle that he had ever seen, and he sure played like it. And now to share some thoughts on what it means to be selected as the winner of the Buck Buchanan Award, here is the 2003 award winner and five-time NFL Pro Bowl defensive end, Jared Allen. Um, what the Buck Buchanan Award meant to me when I won it was a affirmation of, of all I had accomplished and, and all the hard work that I, I put into my college career. And, you know, with my dreams of getting drafted and going to the NFL, I think it was a springboard as far as, you know, letting people know that the whole, you know, small college stigma, you know, wasn't going to hold me back. Obviously, when you get deemed one of the best players or the best player, 
uh, from a defensive standpoint in your entire, uh, you know, conference or, or league or, you know, what in, in one double A, you know, uh, people have to take notice. Um, so I use that confidence going in um, that I could accomplish anything and that I, and I had a lot more I wanted to accomplish. I still had a chip on my shoulder because of the whole, you know, small college stigma. But, you know, winning the Buck Buchanan Award was such an amazing honor uh, to be deemed the best. I think as athletes and competitors, that's all we want to do, at least I know for myself. My goal is always to be the best football player or, you know, the best that I could possibly be. And, um, and you know, this award obviously was affirmation. I was able to accomplish that at that level, which then, you know, just gave me the drive to accomplish more, you know, moving forward in the NFL. Thank you, Jared, for those words and congratulations on your tremendous career. Well, another good friend of the FCS Awards show is two-time Buck Buchanan Award winner and longtime linebacker of the Dallas Cowboys, Dexter Coakley. You know, Dexter enjoyed a great career at Appalachian State and also a 10-year NFL career. So I asked Dexter to share some thoughts of what winning the Buck Buchanan Award meant to him and what it should mean to the finalists and winners of this award. Thank you. It's an honor to be here today to present the Buck Buchanan Award to the winner. The Buck Buchanan Award is a legendary award. Buck Buchanan stood 6'7", almost 300 pounds, with relentless energy and a force to reckon with on the field. When the Kansas City Chiefs drafted him in 1963, he was considered the first player to ever be drafted from a small school, just like you all will be. His relentless attitude and constant pursuit on the field made him one of the greatest players to ever play the game. The Buck Buchanan Award winner and this award really means a lot. This award indicates and means that you're the best player in collegiate football, the best defensive player. It's like the defensive Heisman Trophy winner. So to the winner of this Buck Buchanan Award, I want to say congratulations because your life will forever be changed. Well, thank you, Dexter, and I'm sure that uh, your words are very much appreciated by our trio of top finalists who now join us in front of the stage just up here as we get set to make the announcement of this season's Buck Buchanan Award. And gentlemen, thanks for joining and congratulations to all of you on each of you for getting this far. And I'll start with some brief introductions and we'll hold the applause if we would. So first we have Troy Anderson, senior linebacker from Montana State. Isaiah Land, linebacker from Florida A&M. And finally, Patrick O'Connell, linebacker from Montana. Each of you has had a tremendous season and one of you will be our 2021 Buck Buchanan Award winner. But before we get there, let's take a look at your incredible journeys this season. Our first top finalist for the Buck Buchanan Award is senior linebacker Troy Anderson from Montana State, who under head coach Brent Vegan and defensive coordinator Freddie Banks was named the Big Sky Conference Defensive Player of the Year. During the regular season, Anderson racked up 111 tackles, including 57 solos, with nine and a half tackles for loss and two sacks. He also had two interceptions, one for a touchdown, seven pass breakups, one quarterback hurry, and one fumble recovery. Congratulations to Troy Anderson for a tremendous senior campaign. Our next top finalist for the Buck Buchanan Award is junior linebacker Isaiah Land from Florida A&M University. Who under head coach Willie Simmons and defensive coordinator Ryan Smith was named the Southwestern Athletic Conference Defensive Player of the Year. The 6'4", 215-pound Land produced 25 and a half tackles for loss, 19 sacks for 121 yards and losses, both FCS leading totals. Additionally on the year, he had five quarterback hurries, two pass breakups, three forced fumbles, and one fumble recovery. Congratulations to Isaiah Land for an outstanding junior season. Rounding out our top finalists for the Buck Buchanan Award is redshirt junior Patrick O'Connell from Montana. The wonder head coach Bobby Hawk and defensive coordinator Kent Bear earned first team all Big Sky honors after totaling 91 tackles, including 40 solos, with a conference high 13 sacks, as well as 19 and a half tackles for 121 yards and losses. He had five quarterback hurries, three forced fumbles, and one fumble return for a touchdown. Congratulations to Patrick O'Connell on a superb junior season. Well, here we go. Congratulations to each of you on, on getting to this point. And, you know, this is the 27th presentation of the FCS Buck Buchanan Award. And this season's winner was selected from 22 finalists. 
and the 2021 Stats Perform FCS Buck Buchanan Award winner is Isaiah Land, linebacker, Florida A&M. Congratulations, Isaiah. It was a tremendous season. And both of you, the other finalists, congratulations as well. You're both winners as well. Everybody is a winner in this game because uh, you've gotten to this point. It's been a tremendous honor. And it really was a close vote. This, this vote, Troy, was uh, eclipsed by just 22 points and Patrick coming in third. So it was a very close vote. So now with Sarah, please join me in congratulating our Buck Buchanan Award winner, Isaiah Land. Well, Isaiah, congratulations again. And, you know, hearing, hearing your name for the first time just minutes ago, what does this mean to you to be able to receive this award? Uh, it means a lot. Like, it just shows that, like, a lot of the stuff that my coaches say and my mom told me growing up, like, when I started playing football, it paid off. Like, this is the first season I really just stopped caring about messing up and making mistakes and just trust the work that I put in. So it just shows that hard work really pays off. Now, one of the words that Dexter used in, in his description of this award is relentless. And, you know, for a football player, that's a pretty big word. What does that mean to you when you're out there on the field? Relentless? Well, first of all, um, my coach Emmett from high school, he had this thing called the wolf pack. So I, I play like a wolf on the field. Like, a wolf isn't going to halfway hunt when he goes to go eat. He's going to go hard every time because that might be his last meal. So I just focus on, like, Every play, I'm going to go as hard as I can because I know the, the guy across from me, he's not going to last as long as me. So I just trust that if I go hard every play, I'm going to help my team be successful. And is there anyone in particular you'd like to thank to getting to this point in your career? Uh, I'd like to co thank my mom, my family, my coach, Patterson. Um, co before Coach Pat, I had two, two sacks the season before this. <laughs> so I, he really helped me elevate my game. Uh, I'd like to thank my coach, Emman, and my D-line. And my, my defense back at home, they, we all as a whole bought into just being relentless, every, all 11 doing our job. And all I did was just do my job and trust what, and my teammates was going to do their job and just fell on my hands. So I thank them for that. Well, Isaiah, congratulations on being this year's Buck Buchanan Award winner. And best of luck with the rest of you do. Thank you. Gary, we'll send it back to you. Well, thank you, Isaiah, for being with us and sharing. Tremendous honor. You had a tremendous season. This is a very deserved honor for you. Congratulations. Well, now it's time to turn our attention to the offensive side of the ball. And when we return in a short break, we will present the Walter Payton Award. Stay with us. Our final award recognizes excellence on the offensive side of the ball as we present the FCS Walter Payton Award to the most outstanding offensive player at the FCS. Past recipients of this Heisman of the FCS include Steve McNair, Tony Romo, Brian Westbrook, Jimmy Garoppolo, Cooper Cup, and most recently Trey Lance, and also this past spring winner Cole Kelly. So the legacy of this award is, is really is tremendous and it uh, speaks to the volume of what the, these players have been able to accomplish. There were 25 finalists this season of this 35th edition of the Walter Payton Award, and we will meet our top three finalists shortly. But first, to share some thoughts on what it means to be selected as the winner of the Walter Payton Award, here is the 2013 Jerry Rice Award winner and 2015 Walter Payton Award winner, Cooper Cup. It, it was so special for me, um, you know, first year being able to play, uh, being able to win the Jerry Rice Award, and, um, just the name that that holds, the weight that that holds, um, and the, the players that have won that, just to be mentioned with those guys is just an incredible honor. Um, and then to go on and win the Walter Payton, um, you know, Stats has just done an incredible job of making this a, a very special thing for a lot of football players, and uh, to be able to honor guys that have, that have done um, Done, done well at, at this division, at this level, um, and to have their names up there next to guys like, um, you know, being able, you know, Walter Payton, and, I, and 
obviously not, not just for the player that he is, but just the, the man he is. Just having your name on a plaque with his name is, is, a, is a special deal and uh, something that I, I definitely didn't take lightly. Thank you, Cooper. Congratulations on tremendous things that you're doing right now in the National Football League. It's all fun to watch. We also have a very good friend of the Walter Payton Award, unable to join us tonight, and it's the son of our legendary award namesake, Jarrett Payton. Jarrett was a, a great running back in his own right, and oftentimes, you know, you, when you talk about sweetness, and, and Jarrett is around, and he knows he's, they're talking about his dad. So he is a broadcaster in the city of Chicago, and he had a chance to share some of his thoughts on the Walter Payton Award. Thank you, Gary. The FCS Walter Payton Award, it just symbolizes everything that my dad was all about. Coming from Jackson State, a lot of people didn't give him the time of day, saying he was too small, he was not big enough, wasn't fast enough, didn't go to a big enough school, and that he would never make it in the NFL. And by the end of my dad's NFL career, he became the all-time leading rusher, surpassing Jim Brown. So anything is possible. And tonight, anything is possible as well. You know, our family has really looked at this award and, and seen how it's grown over the years and the winners of this award. When I look at this award, it's all about possibilities. Anything is possible. We can achieve anything that we want to achieve if we put our mind to it. And those are the words that my dad always would echo to me, my sister, and everybody around him. Anything is possible. So our family is just honored and very, very humbled to be able to have this award in my dad's name. And I know that he's smiling down right now, looking at all the finalists and all the good work that they've done on and off the field. So I wanna say congratulations to all of the finalists this year, but also to the top three. But finally, I would like to say congratulations to the winner. Welcome to the family. We love to have you, look forward to meeting you and we wish you nothing but continued success in your walk through life. Thank you. But now it's time to focus on our top three finalists for the, for the Peyton Award, and they join us here in, in front, of the, front of the stage. First, make some quick introductions here, and our first one is Eric Berrier, senior quarterback from Eastern Washington University. Next, we have Quay Holmes, junior running back from East Tennessee State. And finally, we have Cole Kelly, senior quarterback from Southeastern Louisiana, and our reigning Walter Payton Award winner from the spring season. Our first top finalist for the Walter Payton Award is senior quarterback Eric Berrier from Eastern Washington, who under head coach Aaron Best and offensive coordinator Ian Shoemaker, completed 65% of his passes for 5,070 yards and 46 touchdowns against just eight interceptions in 13 games. He also rushed for 222 yards and four touchdowns while earning Big Sky Offensive Player of the Year for the second consecutive season. Congratulations to Eric Berrier for a tremendous senior campaign. Our next top finalist for the Walter Payton Award is junior running back Quay Holmes from East Tennessee State University, who under head coach Randy Sanders and offensive coordinator Mike Rader ranked number one in the FCS with 126 rushing yards per game, 1,518 rush yards overall, and 17 touchdowns over 12 games. Add in 27 receptions for 299 yards and three receiving TDs, and the Southern Conference Offensive Player of the Year averaged 151 scrimmage yards per game. Congratulations to Quay Holmes for an outstanding junior season. Rounding out our top finalists for the Walter Payton Award is senior quarterback Cole Kelly from Southeastern Louisiana, who under head coach Frank Selfo and offensive coordinator Greg Stevens, completed 73% of his passes for 5,124 yards and 44 touchdowns with just 10 interceptions in 13 games. The Southland Conference Offensive Player of the Year also rushed for 491 yards and 16 touchdowns to average an FCS high 431 yards of total offense. Congratulations to Cole Kelly for a splendid senior season. Congratulations to each of you for getting this far. It's a tremendous honor and you know it's an opportunity. All of you are winners. There's no losers in this game. And the 2021 Stats Perform Walter Payton Award winner is Eric Berrier, quarterback, Eastern Washington. Congratulations, Eric. You are a Walter Payton Award winner and great accomplishment. And 
You finished first. Cole, he was 38 points ahead of you. And Quay, you were third. So good stuff, young man. And now with Sarah Merrifield, please join me in congratulating our 2021 Walter Payton Award winner, Eric Berrier. Well, Eric, congratulations. I know you've been at this point before, but this time walking away with the award to wrap up your time in uh, college football, what does that mean to you? Uh, it's, it's a great feeling, um, you know, because I put in a lot of work throughout just playing my college years. You know, it's been a lot of adversity. Um, and, you know, just to finally be at this moment, be at this award show with, with a lot of great people is, is a huge honor. And what does it mean to you to be able to add your name to the legacy as you, you know, just listen to it up there, the legacy of this award and what that means to not just past recipients, but future recipients as well? Oh, it's a blessing. Um, I'm just thankful, thankful every day. Um, you know, because I actually, my first football book I ever read was a Walter Payton book. So just to, you know, see how everything come full circle is kind of crazy. So it's, just, it's a blessing. Um, I'm up there with a lot of great people and I'm gonna forever be thankful. And as far as your career goes, what up to this point has been the most rewarding experience for you to be able to have the success you've had? I, th I think um, the relationships and the um, relationships and just, you know, you go through a lot of stuff in college, you know, your four or five years, you know, as a freshman, because I'm from California, so I went to school in Washington. So, you know, being away from home, being away from my family, having to adjust, pay rent and stuff on my own. So I think I'd take a lot of stuff, you know, I'd take that stuff. Eric, congratulations on being this year's Walter Payton Award winner, and congratulations and best of luck in all you do. Thank you. Gary, we'll send it back to you. Well, some more applause. That's fine. Go ahead, Eric. Congratulations very much, and thank you very much, and you're good stuff. You're a good man. And you had a great season. Congratulations. Now we're going to take a brief break, and we'll be back, and we'll kind of wrap things up for this edition of the FCS Award Show. tremendous evening tonight here and thanks for all for everyone for attending and congratulations to our finalists to our award winners it's been it's been tremendous and Sarah Merrifield thank you for joining us here what are your thoughts on this evening so far Gary, thank you for having me and of course you know to all of those in the room that received awards tonight it was incredible to celebrate your accomplishments because this has been quite a year um, but we look forward to everything you're gonna do in the future and best of luck it's been great you know we always try to shine a brighter light on the FCS and we certainly try to do that with these five legacy awards and we're able to create a lot lasting a tradition as well as recognize some of the tremendous talent across the FCS. We'd like to congratulate again all of our award winners and finalists and hope that you will join us again here back again next January uh, at following the 2022 FCS season. Lastly, we'd like to thank everyone involved with this production who put this all on to make it happen. And so long from Frisco, Texas, you've been watching the FCS National Award Show presented by Stats Perform. Good night, everyone.